In this video, I'm going to give you my framework and workflow for actually writing an SEO article. And this is a topic that's been around for a long time and all kinds of different opinions and philosophies about it. But one of the reasons that I wanted to do an updated video on how to write an SEO article is I'm just seeing as we practice this for clients, um, Google itself, the algorithm, uh, you know, kind of the introduction of AI and machine learning, it's just getting so much more sophisticated that I think um, in some ways, SEO article writing is getting a little bit easier, but it does um, take uh, a, a little bit of kind of different approach than we've done in the past to writing SEO articles. And I just want to show you that as I actually write an article. Um, and the reason that this is really so important to you is even in 2019, when I'm filming this video, um, the actual SEO article, writing a blog post, is still probably one of the easiest and fastest ways to actually gather uh, an audience into whatever uh, you're trying to promote, your business, a particular offer, or just actually building traffic that you can monetize, maybe you're an affiliate or something like that. So the SEO article, the blog post itself, is probably still fundamentally uh, the easiest and fastest way to grow an audience. So I wanna show you how um, I use and, and build this tool uh, in kind of the, the, comp, the, the 2019 um, uh, Google world. So um, as you see on the screen, uh, I always start with an editorial calendar. Um, I want to kind of think through and structure um, how I'm actually um, building out my information architecture around a particular topic or category. Uh, in this particular case, um, we are working within the um, instant offer sort of space. Um, and so I just simply go in here. I've already done kind of my SEO research, my, my organization. I'm going to grab an article out of here. Um, and this is an article that's been assigned to me. Uh, if you're using writers or, um, uh, or you're just doing this yourself, I think that organizational piece is super important to just kind of go through there, make sure you're putting um, information together in a logical way, not only for your user, but also for Google. Um, and then the first step I, I do, um, you can see actually here, I have an SEO article template. I really encourage the use of templates because it structures kind of how you're thinking. And then the very first thing I do, um, you may expect me to go into an SEO tool, but actually for the most part, I don't actually use the SEO tools uh, at all in content creation. We have them, I use them to inform them, but there's, there's really no necessity to do that. So the first thing that I do is I actually stick my working title or concept title uh, into Google. And this is because I want to see how Google perceives this space right now. Um, there's no topic that you're going to put in that's not going to return some results. So you're always going to be competing. And so I'm looking for two things here. One, um, how exactly uh, Google interprets this particular search um, and then who I'm competing with um, and the, the kind of the structure or the approach that I need to take. So you can see there's some paid ads here. Uh, there's a featured snippet. Whenever that happens, I'm kind of trying to compete for that featured snippet. Um, these questions are terribly important. Um, these questions are telling me that from Google's um, knowledge base, when somebody searches for something like this, um, they are usually then asking these next set of questions. And so instead of forcing the user to read my article and then not get the answers to the questions, bounce back to Google and do another search, which is what Google is telling me most people are doing, I'm going to try to actually satisfy all these within my article itself. So this goes to helping me structure um, exactly what I'm going to, to write about and, and how I'm going to lay the article out. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But the first thing I do after this is I simply open up uh, my competition so I can kind of see what they've written. Sometimes I'll peek in here uh, too. Um, you can see this is a, a similar um, kind of format. It, obviously this is kind of uh, tempered a little bit by the fact that I put 10 steps. Um, but you can see, obviously, lists are the way to go. Um, and so that's a different one, even though it's a similar type of article. So I'm just kind of looking through here. Um, ah, that's interesting, the, the pros and cons.
put all my research. I'm going to actually uh, browse through these articles um, and I'm going to article and that's going to kind of be the, the next step. So important steps in the home selling process. So this is a general um, sort of topic. Um, 10 secrets to selling. Um, again, this isn't really touching on the as is part. Uh, and you can see this is a really short, there's like nothing really here to this article. Um, so that's interesting. That tells me that I might have a, it's, oh, it's a multi-part. There we go. Multi-part. So um, shows me that I might um, potentially have a shot at ranking in some of these because there's not a lot. Okay, pros and cons of selling as is. So that's good. This is this hits right on uh, what as is means. So they define it here. Um, what selling as is means. Okay, oh, this is really important. Let's talk about kind of disclosures. Okay, so again, this is, I'm just gonna go walking through my research here. Here's where these lists come from, all right? And let's look at my last article. Okay, and here's another list. So lists are important. So they're kind of doing the preview list and going down through that. So I'm going to kind of continue to, to research through these articles um, such that I can build the structure of my uh, particular article. Once I'm finished with my research, then the first thing I start to do is actually build out my template. Um, one of the things that I do um, that may be a little bit different than other folks is actually just focus on one keyword. And this gets back to the fact that Google's al algorithm is just getting more and more kind of intelligent. And so I don't need to sort of intricately weave together a cluster of keywords or think about that. I want to focus on one keyword. I put it at the top of my document so that that's um, top of mind. That's what the, the sort of the question I'm trying to answer or that's the search query that I want to satisfy, but I don't need to really go any deeper than the keyword. So in this particular case, um, I'm actually, let me put my working title in here first just so I remember um, what it is that um, I intend to write on. So I'm going to go ahead and, okay, 10 tips to selling my house as is. So my keyword here is going to be selling my house. I kind of like home, selling my home as is. This is where you can kind of go into an SEO tool. You can kind of see what home or house, which one's better. Um, and then I immediately want to um, tweak two things. I'm going to tweak my title here, uh, 10 steps to selling my home as is. Because again, the person that's going to be searching for this probably has a home that they want to sell. They know there's a few dings in it. They're like, oh, can I sell it um, like that? So I want to tweak this to, to kind of hit as close as possible. Um, the other um, thing that I want to do is actually this is the title that's going to go into my search results, right? So when I'm filling out this, this top level in my template, really what I'm doing is I'm kind of writing an ad uh, for my article. So this is going to be the title and this is going to be the description. And I write it a little bit different. I write the description to kind of sell my article um, to whoever's doing this search. And then of course the URL, we'll talk about that in a second, kind of comes into play here. It's often stylized now. Uh, it used to be actually the true URL. Uh, but anyway, we'll think about that uh, here in a second. You can see where sometimes, because of the way Google lays this out now, um, there is some utility to potentially having some structure. Um, and you can see that there's obviously some, some tiering here. Um, and so there's some clever ways to, to kind of uh, put that into your URL structure as well. But we're not going to worry about that too much. Um, so title-wise, I've kind of settled on this one. So I'm going to go and put it in here just to make it easy when I publish it. I can literally copy and paste these things into WordPress in the appropriate boxes um, or into Yoast uh, if you're using an SEO plugin for WordPress. 
Um, and then my description, again, I'm going to sell this. Um, and so I've already put kind of my title in here. So like how am I going to get people to actually open and click on my article? Um, uh, so let's do something like selling your home can be stressful. Can't type. <laughs> stressful. Especially Thing I like to do here too is kind of understand my word count because I've only got so much space here. So I've got about 156, so that's should be okay. If, as long as that's under like 160, maybe even 170, uh, you should be good. Um, we're looking at the character count here. Um, and then we're going to actually turn on this display word count while we're typing so we can kind of see how many words that we're, we're building towards. Uh, nice little feature there. You can see that's down here um, that Google Docs has done. The other thing I didn't mention, I, I always write everything in Google Docs because this is really good as a content creator and writer, uh, especially if you're working for an agency. Uh, you can easily share it um, to whoever's like kind of commissioning the work. Um, and then you can always go back up in here and as they edit and make adjustments, even if they don't give you feedback, you can always go back into your document. Uh, you can look at the version history and you can see what changes have been made to really kind of inform you and, and make yourself a better writer for that client. Uh, always encourage you to go back and take a look at kind of the adjustments that they've made there. Maybe the style, maybe the template, um, all those sorts of things. Okay, and then my URL, I always give a suggested URL here. Um, and um, for the most part, I try to keep it as close to the keyword as possible. Uh, again, there's all kinds of uh, mixed opinions on whether this is important anymore, but I think um, it's, it's pretty good. Um, the first thing I do here in my template is I put kind of my target goal here. Uh, and this depends, again, who you're writing for or your particular goal. I've found that 750 to 1,000 words is kind of a good target. Okay, now I'm ready to kind of jump in and start writing. And when I'm writing, I try to really, as much as possible, just kind of use common language um, and talk to whoever my buyer is. And in this particular case, I'm going to think of a buyer, or I'm sorry, a seller uh, that's trying to sell their home, and they're probably trying to sell it out of convenience versus kind of, even though we're talking about selling your home as is, um, in this market and kind of the current state, for the most part, people are trying to sell their homes, or at least my target market for this particular article is to gather those people who are trying to sell homes uh, as quickly as possible for convenience. They're not worried about necessarily getting the top dollar. They probably got a significant amount of equity in their home, which is mostly the case because we've been in a really good market for a long time. So they've probably got equity to spare, um, but maybe they want to buy uh, a bigger home, and but they don't want to carry two mortgages, right? Because they want to get the maximum home they can buy um, in this new home, or maybe they're relocating for job or something like that. And again, they want to buy their ideal house um, at the maximum kind of that they can afford um, or have budgeted for and not have to worry about kind of this anchor of this other home, you know, kind of sitting on the market. So the target here is to talk to those buyers that like, hey, is there a way that I can just quickly sell this house without putting a lot of money into it? Um, and I also want to sell it quickly. So that's who I'm writing to, and as I write this, that's what I'm going to be thinking about. So, um, so I'm going to actually mimic a little bit of this description. I've already started kind of thinking about this, but I want to open up and kind of catch their attention uh, immediately. Um, and so we'll just start writing. And, and when I do this first draft, I'm not really trying to kind of smith anything out. I'm just trying to get words on paper and get that structure flowing.
Okay, so again, I'm trying to kind of open this thing up and keep it pretty tight. Selling your home can be stressful. Maybe you want to buy a new, bigger home, trying to finally buy that dream home. Or perhaps you're relocating and need to quickly find and buy a new home. So I'm trying to identify with my audience here. In both cases, and so I'll probably break this up. In both cases, and for potentially a variety of other reasons, you want to, you want to, you need to make it a need to quickly sell your current home you need to you need to sell your current home as fast as possible but there are a few dings up later um, so the question is is how because we're gonna give them 10 steps so they're gonna so the question the really the question is we're gonna kind of get that keyword in there again right how in just a slightly different way how do, do I is So that's, I set the whole situation up. Hey, does this article fit with me? Um, I'm trying to kind of, again, I'll, as I go through proofing, I'll probably tighten this up a little bit. Um, and then I want to kind of do that final hook and tell them like, okay, this is what we're going to do. Um, so, can I, so the question is, how do I sell my home as is without having to invest any money to get it on the market? This article. In this article, so let's tell them what we're going to give them. I'm going to give you the exact steps to sell, sell your, you and your, that's always my nemesis. I'm going to give you the exact steps to sell your home as is with the minimum, with the, with the minimum amount of investment. Let's just leave it at minimum with 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 minimum with the minimum investment as fast as possible and for as close to top dollar as possible. So those are all the things that this person wants to do, right? They want to they want to put the least amount of money in. They want to get it sold fast, uh, and they ideally still want to get uh, the best you know top dollar as possible. So there's my intro. So now I'm gonna I'm actually gonna write my conclusion next. So. Um, and so really my conclusion is two things. I want to land 
and kind of summarize what I took them through. Um, I want to land it solid um, that this is beneficial, and then I want to kind of tell them what the next steps are. So uh, in this particular case, um, let's do this. Um, uh, that's it. Um, That's another uh, kind of tip as you kind of notice this. So I, I try not to proof it too much to go through, but it's it's hard, uh, especially for me. I, I kind of have a tendency to kind of read through this. But make sure in your tools, uh, you actually have uh, your spelling and grammar suggestions on. The other thing that I suggest is uh, using Grammarly, which is kind of in beta for Google Docs. Um, and it's just a kind of another layer. So hopefully when you're done with it, your proofreading should be more kind of voice and tone and less about just kind of grammatically getting everything right. So definitely uh, rely on those tools. And anything that is a squiggly line, even if you don't necessarily agree with it, I suggest rewriting it to kind of give that nice clean so that when you deliver it, um, there's, you know, the worst thing that we as an agency get is a, a writer delivers just something. It's got all these little squiggly lines all over and you're like, well, why didn't you fix that? You know, and so maybe in their editor, they didn't turn those things on, but uh, it's really distracting because we immediately come in with an impression that like, uh, they didn't even do kind of the most basic uh, spelling and grammar checks. Um, so make sure you turn all those things on so you see those little squiggly lines and get those distractions um, off the table. Um, and again, even if it's maybe they got it wrong, rewrite it so that there's no perception there that um, you didn't kind of take the time uh, to get the basic spelling and grammar right. Okay, uh, that's it. So again, I'm going to write something in between here, but uh, ideally I've, I've kind of told them what they need to know. So I'm saying that's it. Selling your home as is can be relative can be a can be a relatively easy process and then tell them the value of what they read if you follow this checklist you're reasonably assured of selling for good value with minimal investment and still should be able to get your home sold quickly then again sometimes you're selling something with these i mean usually you do an seo for some sort of commercial purpose so i like to throw in a little bit of call to action um, uh, and so in this one it's for an instant home offer um, as we mentioned earlier we mentioned earlier and instant home offer is often the best and fastest way to sell your home as is if you would like to get a fast all cash offer
Okay, so, um, and then I'm just gonna actually so put a link in here. That's my call to action. All right, so that's gonna apply to, again, there's not that, you should definitely put a call to action in that conclusion. And then I wanna kind of name this conclusion. Um, Okay, so um, so I'm actually going to put a subheadline here. Subheadlines are pretty important, um, and so um, now I'm going to build out the rest of the structure of my article by filling in the sublines. And so some of that I'm going to get from my research. And one of the things that's kind of interesting as you kind of do your research, some of your subheadlines should be these questions. So you're going to watch me do that, um, where I'm going to leverage some of these. Um, but the other thing you can do is um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. The <laughs> you reinvent the wheel. Um, you can use a lot of these same uh, steps that you see in other articles. But what I encourage you to make sure that you're not plagiarizing um, is kind of mix and match the different steps that you use, um, and then simply build the structure. And then once you've built the structure, um, throw away the articles um, and don't use them to help you build out the individual uh, pieces. And this is what's going to help you write these articles relatively fast, is to build out that structure, and then you're going to write these little mini articles uh, for each of these, and you'll quickly have a thousand words uh, in no time. So the next thing I'm going to do um, is start to build out my structure um, and the first place that I'm going to look for um, those subheadlines um, is inside of these questions so I'm going to actually shrink these questions down um, how do you sell fast what does it mean to sell your fast should I sell my house or fix it up um, how do you stay positive uh, what sells a house okay so there's a couple things in here um, so let me go back here and I'm going to start building out my structure the other thing I'm going to do here, actually, before I forget, is um, go ahead. I'm going to throw in my, my title here. Okay. Um, all right. So now I'm going to start to build this out. And the first one I build out is a little bit of an introduction. And again, you're going to notice that I'm kind of using some of my keywords, right? Selling my home as is, um, getting your home sold as is. That could be kind of a version of it. Um, and so here I'm going to say um, quick 10 step checklist for Okay, and then these are going to be, um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a bulleted list here, and this is going to be a little bit like a sort of a table of content, um, and it will allow me to sort of link uh, and move people down the page, but sometimes the people are just looking for the summary, and the reason I'm going to do this for this particular article, or I might not do it for another article, is because um, you will see that in here, uh, Google is taking snippets and they're actually grabbing those numbered lists. So I want to make sure that my article has a numbered list in it. Okay, so now I'm going to build out my numbered list first. And then we're going to turn those into subheadlines. And then we're going to write those little mini articles and try to make this um, article come together really fast and write it as fast as we can. So I know i got to come up with 10 things here. Um, so let's start building that list. Um, again, first place I'm going to go is to my search um, and sort of look at um, what's in here. So uh, how, do you, how do you sell your home fast as is? What does it mean to sell? Okay, so let's put some of these things. Um, what? So we're going to put some questions in here and some answers. Can sell is so that's a pretty typical question that I would suspect somebody would have uh, I stopped my formatting I hate when that happens um, okay so I'm gonna get her fix my formatting there a little bit of 
me and all this. Okay. All right. Can I sell my... Uh, so that's a good one. Let's see what else we can find in here. Um, should I sell my house or as is or fix it up? Um, should... Okay, so that's a question that we have in here. Let's see what else is in here. Um, when selling a house who pays for it, what is an as is? Can you sell a house with mold? Okay. Um, can I sell my house as is? Should I sell my as is or fix it up? Um, do I need a realtor? Do this. Um, what do I need to disclose? If I, uh, home as is. Um, do I need a realtor? So let's see what else we got in here. Uh, let's go to this pros and cons. Um, there's some interesting thing in here. What does as is does not mean? What is as is? Some examples of issues of real estate agents. So we're going to hit on that uh, for sure. Let's see if there's anything else. Problems with selling is um, buyers will perceive your home negatively. Buyers will lowball you. Uh, you'll have to work hard to demonstrate what your home is worth paying. You will attract fewer buyers. Um, let's see, reasons. You can't really afford to make any repairs. You really can't handle the stress of a home sale. Financial distress. Uh, um, pricing properly. Talk to your real. Okay, so a couple other things in here. Um, can I sell my home as is? Let's add to this what does selling a home as is mean? Should I sell my home? Um, uh, uh, what do I need to disclose? My home as is. To, um, what fixes? Do this. What fixes, repairs, or improvements let's make a difference in price? Okay, so let's go back up here. I'm kind of trying to think of a sort of a flow that I would go through if I'm kind of thinking about selling like this. Can I sell it as is? Um, should I sell it as is or fix it up? And that's where we're going to do some pros and cons stuff. Uh, what do I need to disclose if I sell my home as is? Do I need a realtor to sell it as is? Um, let's talk about some inspections. Should, should I um, uh, have a pre-inspection done to sell my home? and repairs make a difference. Okay, so let's do this. Should I, um, should I, let's see, what does that call it? Um, again, I'm doing a little research on the fly here. Here's another one, uh, comparative market analysis. I kind of like that. Um, I'm going to actually open that up to kind of see what they wrote about that because I might educate myself on this a little bit or something to be done, especially if I'm going to sell it as is to figure out whether or not I should or need to do any fixes at all because different markets 
different expectations for you know kind of the condition or um, you know uh, the updates to a home and that sort of thing um, some will require more uh, repairs and updates than other markets so let me put that in here um, should I have a comparative market analysis done? Should I have a all right, so I'll get rid of that. Uh, what if, okay, so I've got three more. What would be my other ones? Let's see if there's something else in here. Um. Ah, okay. I like that. And so um how to effectively stage home for fast sale Effectively marketing your listing. Uh, let's see what else. Let's see if there's anything interesting here. Ah, I like this one. Okay. Uh, avoid. Let's do this. Identifying and avoiding needless upgrades. Okay, so that gives me ten. Now, I'm going to take each one of these and I'm going to make it my subheadlines. Uh, let's throw those into my template. And then we're going to do some formatting here. Get rid of that part. Going to those headings too. Okay, and then eventually we're going to kind of hyperlink those down the thing. And you can see how I'm quickly building my word count, right? I'm already at 93. Um, and now I'm going to go back through here. And this is a really important next step as I, oh, there, there you go. I'm at 400. So I'm at like halfway there. And I haven't actually even started kind of writing the guts of the article. So you can see by just structuring your article well, and this is going to help it rank well, um, I'm kind of halfway there to my word count. So a thousand words doesn't seem like a lot. Now, the next thing that I got to remember as I'm doing here, so I don't kind of overwrite this, is that 
um, I have 10 little sections to write, 10 little mini articles to write, um, but I've only got about 500 words left. So I'm only talking about writing like 50 to 100 words per little section. So I'm just kind of hitting the highlights of each and every one of these topics. Um, trying to be informative, that's super important, but not overwrite the topics. So uh, let's dig in and write these 10 little mini articles and then be done with this article. Okay, so as we move through each of these little sort of mini articles, if you will, um, this one's particularly interesting um, because in this first one, um, as I kind of did the research, um, it's obvious that there is some kind of misunderstanding when people are searching for this. They're thinking of, hey, I need to sell my home as is, and there's sort of a legal definition of that. Um, but most people that are actually doing that search are really not thinking of sort of the legal definition, which is offering to sell a home uh, without any sort of warranty or willingness to make any sort of structural or safety type of repair. So there's fundamentally a defect with the home. Um, and, and they think that um, in, in the ones that actually have that situation, they think that they don't need to disclose it, but actually they do um, in most states. Um, and so, so that's a misperception. But the other thing is a lot of times people are searching for that just because they're saying, hey, I want to sell this home as fast as possible. I don't want to update the carpet. I don't want to do paint. Um, you know, I don't want to replace the countertops, all those sorts of things. And, and that's what they mean, but that's not truly selling it as is. That's just um, an unwillingness to make certain repairs or upgrades uh, that would maybe increase the value of the property. But uh, in most markets, most situations, those aren't really required and may not actually increase the value. And so we're going to educate that um, in this particular article. And that's what I do in this first paragraph, just kind of walking through that. Um, and then once we get through this confusion, and this is the value of some of these SEO articles, is really cutting through the confusion in the search term um, to really kind of add value to the readers. And then, um, so what I did here uh, in a couple little techniques is one, I said, hey, you certainly can do this, uh, but the question is often, you know, has some confusion. Here's the legal definition. Um, hey, just because you're gonna sell it as is doesn't get rid of all the headaches and the stress. Um, and then really kind of uh, cutting through that confusion and say, hey, actually most of you are probably asking this question because you just don't want to do, uh, you don't want to sink a lot of money into a home that you're getting ready to sell. So we kind of cut through that confusion. And then I do, and this is a technique I wanted to show you, um, is for those people that truly have an as is problem, a defect in the home, I want to offer them up the product. So in this particular case, um, we offer instant uh, home offers and cash-based offers. Um, and so this is actually a real good solution for those people that are really in that as is. Um, and also introduces the solution to those people that don't want to you know, put any money into it to actually make it marketable um, or more marketable. So we, we're entering our call to action here right inside of the article. And we're going to do that later. Later when we publish it as well. Okay, so let's kind of move to our next thing. Uh, should I sell my home as is or fix it up? Um, and again, we're going to kind of uh, talk through clarifying the confusion here in step two as well.
So what I'm trying to do here is, again, uh, make sure that I'm cutting through the confusion about the question. Again, this is a question that bears understanding your true intent. Um, so we're going to answer the first question. If you have a true defect in your home, this becomes a combination of understanding the requirements uh, and the cost of fixing the defect. Um, this uh, combination of understanding the requirements um, and cost, the requirements and cost, cost of fixing the defect and the potential market price after the fix. Okay, and then uh, once you do this math, it'll be apparent whether or not it makes sense to sell as is, uh, potentially having to. Uh, this means potentially having to sell at less than full market value, or this, uh, this means potentially having to sell at less than full market value, or making the investment in the repair and selling the home for market value. Okay, and then we're going to do the contrast. However, uh, if this is just a question of whether or not of comparative market valuation. Okay, so this is really important. I'm already, this is going to already, you can see it's going to be a really long article. Um, I'm only at number two and I've way exceeded um, the number of, of words here. And that's okay, we can kind of tighten that up later. Um, but I think these will start to get a little bit shorter in here. Um, but I, again, I want to do two things. I really want to get kind of this confusion out of the way so that I'm adding value to um, the actual person that's reading this um, article. Um, and so, like I said, Watching my word count, um, I'm going to try to start to tighten these up and get them a little bit uh, simpler. Um, but the thing that you can even notice that I'm doing is I'm trying to just as specifically as possible answer that question and not put a lot of verbiage into it, not try to kind of flush out the whole thing, not try to add all the detail to it, because a lot of the detail will come as I answer these other questions. The other thing is if Google is actually going to take snippets out of here, they're going to want to take really tight paragraphs you can see in here. Uh, they're not grabbing a lot of text when they're answering these questions, right? So you kind of got to get your answer down. Uh, and mine are already too long, and so in editing, I might actually reduce these a little bit. Um, but I'm trying to keep these as tight and as specific to the question as possible. So we'll just kind of continue to answer through these and write these many little answers to the questions.
again, I want to catch these little errors along the way. So I have a fairly clean document when I go into proofing. Uh, most cases you will need to do it. And so here's a little tidbit that I learned from here. Um, let me see if I can find that actual reference. I think it's in here. Yeah, Consumer Protection Act, also known as this. Um, so I'm going to go and see if I can grab that same citation. Let's see if this is. So you actually want to make sure. Um, so let me do this consumer so there's consumer protection act the thing we might do I'm always looking for a sort of authoritative cross links So it looks like that's kind of state by state, but let me see if I can kind of find um, a legal. Ah, here we go. So no low, this is a pretty reputable. Legal site, so I'm going to take this. This is kind of a, a nice little trick to, to cross reference, cross link, a SEO trick to cross link into um, an authoritative site. And over time, you'll kind of understand what's more authoritative than others. But this is a, a reputable legal site uh, if you were using a real estate because they are held to an even higher to protect uh, consumers. ethical and legal standard to protect consumers. So I'm just going to reference this. So if people want to kind of take a look at what that is, um, they can do that. So stick that in there. And we have a nice cross reference. Ah, messed that up. Fix my little link here. And, and then I think I'm just going to leave that one as is because we're going to kind of talk about disclosures um, even further on. So I don't think we need to talk about that anymore. Do I need a realtor to sell my home as is? Um, so I'm gonna, again, I'm going to keep this super simple. Um,
to sell your home as is your buyer is most likely going to be a more sophisticated real estate investor, not a consumer per se. Often, these investors are offering often in cash offers. Gonna leave it at that. Okay. And should I have a pre inspection? Okay, at this point, we have gone through and kind of fully written um, our article, and this is kind of what it looks like at the end. Um, I've got all my metadata here, I've got my title, I've got a good intro. Um, I kind of summarize the article at the top here. Um, so if people just want the 10 listings, uh, they can get that. It also helps Google put that in if they want to give me the featured snippet for this particular concept. Um, and then I write these little uh, mini articles as we go down through here. Uh, again, this got a little bit long. I think once we uh, go into the proofreading and editing stage, uh, this will probably lose uh, a few hundred words as we tighten it up. Um, another little feature that I put in here um, that makes this article stronger for SEO is I've embedded some videos that kind of illustrate some of these points a little deeper. That'll also let me trim down some of the words in here because I'll kind of use the the videos to do the talking um, on some of these little subsections. Um, but I've got nice subsections there that are kind of keyword specific. Um, and then, of course, I already wrote my conclusion. So um, that hopefully is helpful. Uh, that's how I go about writing these SEO articles uh, for maximum opportunity of ranking. Uh, for a whole bunch of different reasons that I've kind of run through this. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. Uh, check out our other videos uh, here on Kaleidico um, where we share all kinds of different uh, ways to make your digital marketing more effective.